Covering. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. If you have tuned into this video because in your search results, you may have been going through something in your life. For those of viewers that normally watch the videos that I produce, let me first just share with you to let you know it's been on my heart to do a video about salvation, the simplicity, how easy it is to accept Yeshua or Jesus into your own life. I've been wanting to do that because it is an essential need, especially in the hour that we're living in. We know that salvation is not only of the Jews, but it's of the Gentiles as well, equally of importance to them, because without it, there is no hope. And although I do realize that the gospel of Yeshua, the gospel of Jesus is about to return to the Jews, there are still those that are surfing the internet. They're fed up with the churches. They're sick and tired of what they're seeing in churches, the hypocrisy and everything else that goes along with the things that happen in the church, and they're searching. You may have clicked on a search term about suicide. You may have clicked on it about different issues in life, homosexuality, drinking, uh, promiscuity. Uh, I don't know what all kind of search engine terms we'll use to try to reach those that might be in desperate need. You may be an alcoholism. You may be a wife that has been battered. Uh, you may have been raised in a home that claimed to be a Christian home, but yet the legalism has been so tremendously horrible that even you yourself have never wanted anything to do with Christ because you've just assumed that Christ and all the rest of the Bible characters are abusers of women. But I'm here to tell you that there is a God in heaven, Jesus Christ himself, that sits on the mercy seat that is there waiting to have a relationship with you. I got an interesting email today. I won't go into the specifics of the email, but the person that emailed me had a very difficult situation. A lifestyle that, although it was not being practiced, brought this person to a place that they were fearful would God even have anything to do with them at this point. And so they were writing me, telling me about what they were going through, and they were sharing with me that yet at the same time in their heart, they feel that the hour is very late, and they felt in their heart they needed to get right with God, but they were just afraid that God wouldn't have anything to do with them. So many people think that. You'd be surprised how many people that are on this earth right now that think I've stooped so deep in sin that God would have nothing else to do with me now. That how could he save me? Uh, men that maybe have lived in promiscuity and, and run with every woman and, and demoralize them. Maybe you, you were a wife beater or a woman beater. And maybe women, maybe you'd got into prostitution. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's all kinds of things. Perverted lifestyles. Men living with men and women with women. Every sin is a sin that God would condemn that you see in your life, but yet something begins to deal with you and you want, you just feel something in your heart telling you, I, I need to be saved. I've got to know Him. The hour is late and I realize it's late. God, what do I do? See, but then... Satan comes to battle you in your mind and tries to tell you, well, no, you've done this and you've done this. You've blasphemed God. You, you, you know, he'll have nothing to do with you now. If there is just a glimmer inside of your heart that you want to be right with Christ, you're wanting to know him. You really, if, 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 if you're thinking in your heart, even as you're listening to this, no matter how stooped in sin your life may have become, you might even be saying, while you're listening to it, brother, you have no idea the things that I have done, the perversions and, and this or that or whatever it is. You have no idea what I've done. And you're right, I don't know. But I do know one thing. If something inside of your soul, something deep within inside is saying, if I could only, if I could only get right with God, if he would only take me back, I would serve him with all my heart. 
Do you not realize that's him calling you? No man can come to me except that the Father draws him first. Isn't that beautiful? So see, and I've had many people in time past have written me. Do you think I've gone too far? You know, when you take the time to write me and ask that question, the answer is absolutely no. If you're taking the time to search on the internet to try to find some way to get to Christ, you're trying to find a connection, something that somebody could speak to where you'd feel comfort in your heart to say, no, I haven't crossed that line. The only thing you can ever do that would, that would cause God to turn his back on you is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. To call the Spirit of God and the works of God an unclean thing. There's some might be even scratching their head right now saying, I, I think I did that. I, I, I. You know how you know if you've done it or not? Give yourself a simple test. If you knew he would take you back right now, would you accept it? Don't look at what you did. If, you're willing, if you knew he's willing to take you back, would you accept it? If your answer is yes, you've never crossed the line. You might have done some pretty bad things. Nobody is righteous in his sight. Just because another guy does another thing, you might have been a cheat, lie, steal, stole from the church, everything else. You know, if it's something you've done wrong and you can make it right, then go make it right. That's true. If you've hurt somebody, go make it right. But when it comes to that salvation, when he's dealing with your heart, do not wait to make it right with him. He's the first one you need to make it right with. And we're going to talk about that because I want you to understand how to make it right with him. And then I'm going to pray for you at the end of this message. John chapter 1, excuse me, John chapter 3 is a pivotal part of the discussion. Everybody, it seems, that knows John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. I want to simplify things for you because sometimes people make it harder than what it really is. And even for those of you that listen to this ministry all the time, it may shock you. What I'm going to tell you may even be a shock to you. I really had no intention on doing this video tonight. I did want to do it. I want it placed on our website so that when people are searching and having troubles, I want there to be a salvation video that people could click on and they could understand who Christ is and who you are to Him. There was a man of the Pharisees. By the way, the Pharisee was the strictest sect of the Jews in the time of Yeshua. They're what we call the Orthodox Jews of today. I'm actually in fellowship with them. Named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. Jesus is Yeshua, the same. We'll, we'll use Jesus for your sake because you may not know it any other way. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He raised the dead, caused the eyes of the blind to be open. He fed the 5,000 Every, everything he was doing was showing that he was God. Do you know when he read, fed the 5,000? This is the reason why Nicodemus comes to him, because of all these miracles. We know that no man could do this except he come from God. Of course. And everything he did was to show who he was. When he takes the, the blind man, he spits on the ground and he makes a mud cake. And he places it over his eyes like that. He just puts that big cake. You know, I used to wonder, why, why would Jesus, why would he spit on, I mean, some people, I, I was actually heard one time a brother say, well, it was done because of the hygiene in those days. He was trying to get them beyond the hygiene because they, you know, the scripture does say they love, they, they would wash the outside of the pots and pans and everything, but the inside they're full of dead man's bones. Sure, there, that, that could be something to do with it, but that's not what it was. He was showing the Jews that he was the very God that created Adam from the dust of the ground. And no doubt something about his eyes. Maybe, maybe the cornea wasn't quite formed properly, but he was 
born blind. So something wasn't right. So he takes and makes clay of the dirt with his own spit. And then he put it over his eyes. Then he tells him to go to the pool of Siloam. I did a video on this a little while back. To go to the pool of Siloam and wash. See, wash all that dirt off. And then he could see. He was the same God that formed Adam from the dust of the ground. When he breathed on his apostles, he said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. What was he doing? Showing that he was the same God that breathed in the clay figure called Adam, and he received the Holy Ghost. Not only did he receive the Holy Ghost, but his wife that was in him received the Holy Ghost. Different subject altogether. Anyway, though, he feeds the 5,000. He was showing that he was the very God that fed the children of Israel in the wilderness journey with the bread there. They wanted meat, he gave them meat, he gives them fish. In the wilderness journey, he gave them quail, they wanted birds. See, everything he was doing was showing who he was. So, so anyway, he says, no man could do these except that God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? You have to understand, see, Nicodemus wanted to know how this salvation worked because he knew his doctrine was different. So, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be, and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, that's an interesting one. Now, notice what he says to start with. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he goes a little further. He said, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you want to see the kingdom of God, you've got to be born again. And if you want to enter in, you've got to be born of water and of spirit. Now, most of the time we take that as water baptism and being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is for cleansing. It's how in the times of the temple, when we had the second temple, we have, still have it today, the ancient baths uh, that you would come up and you would immerse yourself, cleanse yourself before you would go up to the temple to be presented before God. It's the same thing. But it also represents the water from the rock, the waters of life, which, by the way, it's how the Spirit gets back in you. It's the restoration. So, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You don't, in other words, you don't know where he comes from or where he goes. You don't, know how, you don't know how it happens necessarily. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered unto him and said, Art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? Verily I, verily I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you of earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Now he's the Son of Man. Here he is. Yeshua is the Son of Man. He claims to be in heaven. Now that's a tough one to figure out. So, all right, let's go a little further then. Now, he says, and, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, it may sound like we're not going into salvation, but we are. All right? Bear with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, 
lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and they tarried with them and baptized. Now, a lot of things that Jesus says here that's important. He talks about the light. They love not the light. You have to understand, Jesus was that light. Or he is not just was, he is that light. In John 1 and 1, it talks about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. A little, several verses down later, I think verse 8. All right, the first word that God ever spoke in Genesis, that God himself sp physically speaks is in verse, I think it's verse 2, where he says, the yomad Elohim yahi or. And God and he said, let there be light. All right, now, I want to simplify some of this for you. Um, let me just pull that up real quick. So God says, Ve'yomer Elohim yahi od, ve'yahi od. And God said, and he says, God, let there be light. And we translate it, and, and, there, and, there, was, you know, and there was light. Literally, though, it's God becoming manifest in the dimension we live in. Ve'yore Elohim et ha'od kitov. And God saw that the light, that it was good. God was making him own self we might say a body for himself even then, but the body was the Shekinah glory. It was what was going to express God in the dimension we live in. Now, I don't want to make this too deep because if you're seeking salvation, I want you to understand this without this being very deep. But here's what's important though. And God separated the light between, between the light and the darkness. But then he goes on to say, but the darkness comprehended it not. You see, the darkness, like Satan, he doesn't have the ability to comprehend it. So what Yeshua was saying here when he talks about that that light cometh in, in verses, uh, he starts at, when he gets into the light part of this, he's, he, he, he says here, verse 19, and this is the combination that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. You see, God was that light in Genesis when the world, world was first created. Did you ever notice, though, that also it says to Elohim al-chafet al chamaim, and God, or the Divine One, He hovered upon the surface of the waters? See? The very Spirit of God, and actually was the Spirit, because I'm sorry, I didn't back up far enough to read that for you. Um, he's talking about there being darkness, and, and, and everything was without form and void over the face of the earth. And it says, Alpanech Tachum Veruach Elohim. See? And upon this, the face of the deep, the Spirit of God, Machafet Alpanech Amaim, hovered or brooded upon the, the surface of the waters. This is why Yeshua, Jesus himself, walked on the water when he was up in Galilee. He was the light that come into the world in Genesis. He was walking or hovering or brooding over the waters in Genesis. And now that light becomes manifest. God's own Shekinah presence becomes manifested in a human body called Jesus, as we know him as Yeshua or Yahshua. He's manifested here to us, and he is that light. And then this time here, see, the light couldn't comprehend him back then either. The light, the darkness had, excuse me, the darkness couldn't comprehend him in Genesis. The darkness had to flee when the light was there. And when the light came among men, those that were living in darkness could not comprehend it. 
and they had to flee. So Nicodemus, though, Nicodemus doesn't flee from him. Nicodemus comes to him. He recognizes this light as something that he has need of. Well, interestingly, John, and also in the second chapter, let me actually open this up so I have it for you. In the second chapter of John, and I, and I know this may seem like I'm going a long way to get to the point here, but I'm, going to simp I'm trying to simplify this down so that you'll really understand what being born again is. It's not some worked up thing. It's not working up emotions or, or anything like that. I don't say that when you get saved that there's not some wonderful emotions that go with it. Sure. You know, it's like a child being born. You know, could a mother have a child and not know she had the child? Of course not. In John chapter 1 verse um, 4, in him was, was life. And the life was the light of men. In who? In who was life? Let's look at verse 3. Let's, let's, very, John 1, 1, going at, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, was, excuse me, and, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And of course, why? We see that God in spirit is brooding over the earth, then he comes from spirit, he becomes a light, a Shekinah glory. Now God has given himself uh, um, a physical form, the light, in order to, to, not, it wasn't just for the fact of being seen, but John says, and in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So inside of God, back in the very beginning of Genesis, was life. Well, we have in the Garden of Eden, Eitz Chaim, the tree of life. So he was that tree. He becomes, he becomes, first he's spirit. Then he becomes that Shekinah, the light. Then he became a tree, a, what we would call a fruit tree. But the fruit of that tree was eternal life. And that eternal life is light. In fact, Adam and Eve in the very beginning are called Ish and Isha. Their names literally are created from two words. The fire of Hashem, or Yahweh, some people say that. It's, Yahweh is not the correct way to say God's divine name, but it's God's divine name was in them. That's why John said he was the life, and the life was the light of men. What was the light? The ash that was inside of Adam and Eve. And God made them. They were equal between each other. There was not one greater. Just because Eve, God took Eve out of Adam didn't make him greater than her. So even if you've stumbled on this, let's say you're looking for Christ for salvation, but all you ever hear is it's troubling you because, oh, men are the boss and men make the decisions and men have the absolute and God said for a woman to keep silent in the church and, and everything like this and, and you're so troubled. You don't even, uh, you're afraid to even accept Christ as your Savior because it doesn't seem normal that we should lord over one another doesn't make sense because Paul did say, do not be lords or masters over one another. But, but then you read over here, we could go into another message for that. But let me just assure you of one thing. When Paul said that the man was the head of the woman in Greek, Kephale Greek, he actually says to her, she, or says, he is the source of the woman. Just like in Genesis, God created God created the light, God created the spirit, God created the man, and from the man God brought the woman. So God was, when it says that God is the head of Christ, He is the source of Christ, Christ is the source of the man because nothing on the earth was created without Him, and He created everything. So it was the, it was when Christ, well Christ is anointed, He was in the anointed state doing the creation on the earth. And from him was the life or the light of men, which he created Adam. And inside Adam, when he blew in his nostrils the breath of life, he literally, what was he? He didn't have to be born again. He was being born the first time. And so was Eve being born the first time, filled with the spirit of almighty God. So when Jesus says a man must be born again, it's because your first birth that you have now is not like Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve came born with that life with the light of Almighty God already in them. Their first birth was correct. But our birth is through the natural course. And because sin came into the world, Adam and Eve forfeited this beautiful life, this beautiful tree of life that was meant to blow into our nostrils 
the spirit of life, the spirit of God. And because Christ was no longer here, because that was cut off, and man was pushed out of the Garden of Eden, so therefore their children were born. Abel, Cain, Seth, all the rest of these boys and daughters were born, but could not receive the eternal life because of sin. So God had to make a way. He had to make a way back. That's why Yeshua, Jesus here says, a man must be born again. Now, he knew that Nicodemus couldn't understand this because he said no man can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. What does that word see really mean? Well, if you take it from the, from the Hebraic standpoint, like a prophet is a seer, a navi is a seer, oh, hey. he sees things, he understands things by divine inspiration that we don't normally understand ourselves. But in this case here, if you're born of the Spirit of God, then you're able to see the kingdom of God. You become part of the economy of God. So anyway, so as we look back over here, when John is speaking over here about this and about, or excuse me, Jesus is speaking, let's go back to what he says to him. And we'll go back to the part about being born again. So except, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You know what the water is? Most people think water baptism. But we know that water baptism could not be what Yeshua is talking about here, although I do believe that water baptism is essential, especially when you know it. The reason I say that is because of the thief on the cross. But then again, the Spirit of God had not been poured out yet either. You have to keep that in mind. This man died on the cross. Well, actually, he died after the Spirit of God was poured out because he had left his body and everything. But he had not given the Holy Ghost as of yet because we see that on the day of, uh, on the day of Pentecost. Now, he does, after his resurrection, he breathes on his apostles and he says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Which, again, another outward sign showing that he was the very God in the Garden of Eden that was breathing in the nostrils of Adam. And he breathed the Spirit of God the, actually, the Bible says, uh, chayim. He breathed in his nostrils the breath of life in a plural form. Why? Because God knew that Eve was in that same body that Adam was in. And he breathed that light, that fire of God inside of them. And, they became, and Adam became a living soul. See, he was a living soul, singular, but he breathed a plural form of that life in there because God knew what? He was going to put Adam into a deep sleep and pull his bride from him and create this beautiful woman called Eve. Or in this case, she wasn't called Eve. She wasn't called Chava. She was just called Isha. So what happens here? Jesus says, except the man be born of water and of spirit. Christ is that water. Now, I do believe it does have the symbolic meaning of water baptism as well. So it's not that I don't believe that. I do. If you know to be, if you're looking to be saved, first accept Him as your Savior. All you have to do is to believe on Him. See, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What was it? What, what happened when, um, when the Philippian jailer came to Paul? He comes in there, he's frightened, there's a great mighty earthquake, he falls down on his face, weeping before Paul, thinking that they'd all had escaped and they would cost him his life. But when he saw that no harm, it, everything was okay, and I'm just paraphrasing the story, he asked Paul, he says, what must I do to receive eternal life? And Paul said unto him, believe and you and your house shall be saved. Do you not realize that if you would believe on the Lord Jesus, that if you would accept Him as your own Savior and let and become born again, filled with the Spirit of Almighty God, that's the new birth, by the way. The new birth is when you receive His own life into your soul. That's being born again. That can happen in an instant, in a flash. Now, so He says there, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. In other words, you don't have to put so much emphasis into that. It's the simplicity of it is. You're born of a physical birth, but you know you don't have eternal life with that physical birth. 
So he says, don't marvel at that. The wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell when it cometh and where it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. You don't even, you don't, you don't under, how did, in other words, how did this change come about? You don't know where it come from. What caused this person to change? You can't tell because why? It's the Spirit of God. When a person is born again, when you believe that Yeshua is indeed the Mashiach, that he is the Messiah, if you believe that with all of your heart and ask him to come and breathe his life into your nostrils, into your soul, into your spirit, he will do it. I can't say how it will make you act afterwards. I know there's some that have all kinds of beliefs and everything. You know, you got to do this. You got to do that. This is how you know you got the Holy Ghost. If you don't do this, you don't have the Holy Ghost. I mean, I can't say that. Jesus didn't say that here. But watch what he does say to Nicodemus. Nicodemus answered him and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, knowest not these things? Verily I say unto thee, We speak that we know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall, I, shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man shall ascend up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Yeshua is really trying to set the stage for Nicodemus. He's trying to show him where he come from. He's trying to get him to recognize that he was the one in the beginning. He's trying to get him to understand that he is that light. He's simplifying it. And the funny thing is, John gets it. So he goes on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he's letting him know how that life is going to be restored, how the water and the spirit is going to be restored. See, when Moses lifted up the brass serpent, he's showing you that I will have to be lifted up as sin. I will have to be judged as sin. Judged by God. I will have to die. I will have to become like a brazen serpent. I will be lifted up. So he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's, it's not some great big workup. Yes, repent of your sins. I agree. Ask God to forgive you. But if you will believe on him that has come, if you will believe that Yeshua indeed was God manifested in a human body to take away your sins and my sins, if you just believe that he is that one that God sent for this purpose to restore that eternal life with you, to restore that relationship with you, he is obligated to fill you with his spirit. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, Abraham was willing to give his son. And God just wanted to see if he had the ability to do so. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That, that's, his whole, that's really the purpose of Yeshua coming. He was, in other words, he wasn't coming just to say, you're doing wrong, you're breaking the commandments, you're going to hell. He came to restore that life that was lost by Adam and Eve. And you're sitting here in the same condition. You're a, 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 a woman or a man born of the flesh. And because you're born of flesh, you've done things that were wrong. I did things that were wrong. We've all done things. People that are listening to this video have done things that were wrong. But if you're desiring to know him, to, to have the restoration of what we what Adam and Eve forfeited for us in the Garden of Eden, it's here for you right now. Even as I speak to you, you can have it if you will believe it. He didn't even say, go repent of your sins. He said, if you will believe. Because once you believe, he will condemn you. He will convict your heart of the things that need to be straightened out in your life. Don't worry about trying to get cleaned up to come to God. Just get to him. He will clean you up. You understand? 
It's not something you got to work yourself up to. You don't have to go to the front of the church line and, 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 and keep reciting certain things or recite a certain prayer. It's not that. Believe on him. Do you realize that Israel is about to recognize that Yeshua is indeed the Mashiach? And the Bible says in one day she will be born a nation. And Yeshua, when he wept over Jerusalem, he said, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood. But you would not. Now, Matthew, you have it in King James, uh, where, where it says that your house is left desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. But the original Hebraic version that Matthew wrote, he said, You're, you will leave your houses desolate. In other words, the Jews would leave Israel and not have the Holy Ghost. This heart of theirs would be desolate because they didn't believe on him. And he said, you will do it until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And literally, Matthew didn't even say it that way. He said, until you say, blessed is your Savior that has come. I paraphrase that a little bit too because I, I thought I had the Matthew Hebrew gospel here with me, but I don't. Still the same meaning, same purpose. Now, if their house is left desolate until they say, blessed is our salvation, our Savior that has come, you're no different. You're grafted into the same tree when you believe. In the way you become into the tree, the same olive tree that, that the Jews are part of. That's Romans 11, in case it's the first time you've ever heard that. But you're grafted into the same tree, so therefore your house is desolate even now. In this case, it's your heart. That's what's causing you. See, there's a longing inside of you. You're thirsting for life. You're thirsting for God. But you're trying to fill it with everything else. You try to fill it with video games. You're trying to fill it with television. You're trying to fill it with movies. You're trying to fill it with somebody that you're in love with. Or, or, or you're trying to fill it with worldly things or, or possessions or, or this or that. Everything but God is in there. And you can't seem to satisfy something that's burning inside of you to recognize that Yeshua is indeed the Mashiach, the God of heaven that came down to this earth, that gave his life so that that water that came from his side, like the rock that Moses smote in the wilderness, was a representation of the being born of the water and the spirit, so that that water that you would drink of his water, which is eternal life, and when you believe upon him, you don't have to have a desolate heart tonight. Your heart is a house for him to dwell in. And it doesn't have to be desolate. When you leave your own homes every day and you're going about in the world, you're leaving your house desolate if you don't have Christ in your heart. He should be the most precious thing in your life. If you're backslid, if you're backslid, just turn back to him. He's so merciful. He's so quick to forgive. He goes on to say, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. In other words, the thing that condemned the Jews back then was because they did not believe that he was that light. The very thing that condemned them, they didn't believe that the light that was written in Genesis when God said, Ve'yomer Yahior, and God had said, he said, let there be light. And he separated between the light and the darkness. The darkness couldn't comprehend it. 
And that same light from Genesis came manifested in a human being. And he said, and this is the condemnation that the light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because of their deeds were evil. If you're willing to forsake your deeds, if you're willing to say, God, I've had enough, I don't want to go through this no more. I'm tired. If you're like the prodigal son as so many ministers preach about, so the prodigal son, he had wasted his father's inheritance on riotous living. He just didn't care. And so many of us today, we've done the same thing. But the beautiful thing about it is, is that God is still willing. He still has an outstretched hand. And that light that came into the world, Yeshua, who was the light in the Garden of Eden, who is the light that John is talking about. There was the same light that when he breathed into the nostrils of Adam and Adam and Eve, both of them in there, he breathed the Eitz Chaim, which was the fire of Almighty God. And of course, a fire makes light. That's why John says he was the light of men. Not just mankind, in other words. He was the light of mankind because we know that because clearly Adam and Eve both had it. And clearly when God brought Eve from out of that womb of Adam, so to speak, not even she was in an actual womb, but you know, he took her from him, bone of bone, flesh of her flesh of his flesh. But God actually says, mean ish. He took from the spirit of almighty God that was in Adam and made Isha, another light. Nowhere do you see that he has to breathe in her nostrils the breath of life. Why? She had it already. But today, she has to receive it just like you do. God is no respect of persons. And no, sister, you're not less. He redeemed you. Adam and Eve equally fail. Uh, I say equally fail. We're, we're, we're both fallen. We're fallen as a result. And we're redeemed. Redeem is to bring you back to what was the original. I know some people try to argue and say, well, there was only men priests, there were only men apostles. Well, you have to remember, sure there was, because why? The Spirit of God had not been given yet. And when the Spirit of God came, then there's liberty. That's why it says there's neither, neither male nor female. But we're all in one. And brothers, you have no idea how many women don't come to Christ because of a patriarchal, domineering spirit. So brother, sister, whoever it may, that has come across this video, you can receive that very life. You can receive that light. You can receive the water. Do you know the woman at the well says to Yeshua, he asked her, bring me a drink. She says, sir, the well's deep. You don't have anything to draw with. You're a Jew. I'm a Gentile. Or excuse me, I'm a Samaritan. We have no dealings with one another. And Yeshua says to her, if you knew who it was that was speaking to you, you would ask me for a drink and I would give you water that you don't come here to draw anymore. She said, sir, tell me about this water. I'm just paraphrasing, cutting this short story short. I realize that. But she wanted that water. Once she realized who, what that water was, the water was the life of Almighty God. When Moses struck the rock, just like Jesus said, the, the serpent, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Just like it was when Moses and the elders went out and judged the rock and smote the rock that the waters could be brought forth, that water represented the eternal life of God. The waters of life. And those of you that don't like the Star of David, by the way, the very molecular structure of water are little tiny stars of David. Interesting, isn't it? Salvation is for you. It's not a workup. Just believing. Believe that Yeshua was indeed the Son of Almighty God. It was God Himself manifested in a human body. Your house doesn't have to be desolate, not for a moment longer. 
Oh, you may still drink, you may still smoke and cuss. But one thing's for sure, if you take him into your heart tonight, if you receive that, if you believe that he is and receive that spirit, he'll go to work on you. And he'll begin to clean up those things that don't belong there. Because he doesn't want to be living with you in a state like that. So he'll work with you. Let's pray together. I'll pray with you right now. And I trust and pray to God. It'll be a blessing to you, and I know it'll change your life. And if you have need of prayer further, or if you want to be prayed for, for personally, right on our website, con contact. Just click on that. It goes right to an email address for us. Put in the subject line, I need prayer for salvation. Or would you pray for me? I've given my life to Yeshua or Jesus, however you want to put it. Put it in the subject line. I watch specifically for urgent requests like this. And if I'm not doing it, someone else will, and they'll make, bring it to my attention. Because the whole purpose that we're all here for is to help guide the souls that are lost to the light. And that light is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I know I don't know who might be listening or what they might be going through. But when you spoke to Nicodemus, you made it very simple and very clear. And forgive me, Lord, if I was too long. I hope I didn't make it complicated, Lord. I hope that whatever I said will speak to the people's hearts. Those that do not know you as their own Savior, as their own Messiah, I pray for them now, Lord. Forgive them of their sins, Lord. But most importantly, I pray that you will cause them in their own hearts that they will believe upon you, that you indeed are the Son of God that came to take away the sins of the world. May they believe upon you even now. And I pray, God, according to what you said in your word, you even said to Israel, your house is left, de you will leave your houses desolate until you say, blessed is he, or blessed is our Savior that has come, or blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, as King James words it. May they confess tonight, Lord, blessed is our Savior, Yeshua. Blessed is our Savior, Jesus. Blessed is he that came in the name of the Lord. I pray for them, Lord. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill them even now, dear God, and let the power of Almighty God come upon them. Let, may they be like the woman at the well. Maybe she was at the cross that day, and when the Roman soldier pierced his side and the water came separated from the blood, maybe she was there and saw that and recognized that the water was representing the very life of God that was inside of this man. Lead him, Lord, according to your will. In the name above all names, Beshem Yeshua Adonai HaMashiach, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Good night. Those of you that happen to see this video that already know the ministry, we'll be headed overseas.